Hello, this is Steve, and today's project is this uh, pair of Shell Cordovan Allen Edmonds. Now, you see it, it's a part already. Um, yesterday, I was working on this pair, and I posted some pictures online, and um, a couple of uh, viewers said if I could make a video, of it, or if there's a video of the repair, that'd be wonderful. So, I stopped with the project I finished one so I kept this so I can record this so basically uh, the toe cap here is coming apart see that over time of use when it starts flexing like this the stitches give away now two issues here one is this stitch needs to be done also there's a lot of polish and wax buildup on these shells we need to strip off and clean now um, let me show you the finished one. This is what it'll look like when it gets done. So I finished this one because I was already started the project. So I figured might as well get one done and the other one I can record how I did it. Alright, so let's get started. Now sometimes if these stitches come loose we simply stitch it back up but the problem is that once once you slide it into the patching machine you can't go past that point towards the weld the proper way to do it which is not done all the time that way but is to remove the weld out of the way the Goodyear the Goodyear weld construction is basically you've got the uppers you've got the foot bed then you got the weld here all stitched together so in order to get to the upper you need to remove the weld which that's what we're going to do now A lot of comments have been made about my my uploads that it's 360 or something resolution I guess I can assure you it's 1080p it's 1080 1080 I don't know how many times I'm gonna tell you guys that it's 1080 I don't know what YouTube is doing after I upload it but sometimes people uh, when they get a notice that I've uploaded a video and they want to watch it which hasn't been I guess transferred I don't know how, what the correct terminology is to 1080 so YouTube is still kind of uploading on their end or downloading whatever the heck you call it so you know for the last time guys it's not 360 it's a 1080p I hope that you guys are patient and wait till YouTube does whatever they do they do so partially remove the weld okay now you don't want to you don't want to create a damage you don't want to damage anything as you're taking that apart because you basically have to restitch it the same spot as where you took it apart Just take old stitches out I will right, we'll get to that no worries these old Allen Edmonds man they're pretty tough I think they've, they spent a little bit more detail back then than they do now. Not that it's bad now, but it's just it's just different.
I'm gonna use a little bit of turpentine to release that glue on that on that gaming area. It's unfortunate you gotta take all this apart just to get to that stitch, but when the uppers are, are stitched, when a shoe is made, basically that's the first assembly that they do, you know, stitching the uppers. Well, in order to get to that, you've got to undo just about everything. Yeah, I know it's a mess now. It'll be alright once it gets done. As you see with the other shoe. That's the footbed right there. If I can push it back. Okay, that's the footbed right here. I'm gonna roll that, tuck that underneath. Now, you see that hole right there? That's where the toe is rubbing on. Customer needs to either trim his toenails or something, man. Okay, that's the toe stiffener, toe counter. <coughs> now we can get to the cap. We'll simply cut the stitches. <coughs> now the the shell quarter in here has a canvas back back liner that right there we're going to cut that it's already cut in half anyway we're going to cut that to take that toe piece toe cap off Got half of a shoe. <laughs> it looks like a looks like a slipper of some sort. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Now, at this stage, I'm gonna clean the uppers. This is from yesterday's shoe. This is from one shoe that that all that um, old polish came off. I'm using acetone, by the way. I know it's a bit harsh on, on shells, but man, this is this calls for drastic measures. Look at this thing. That's just the beginning. I mean, it took me a while to get all that crap off yesterday. You're just going to continue to do this until, until it doesn't until everything's off. Now this was years of, I shouldn't say abuse, I mean, the customer, sure he thought was doing, you know, good by applying some products to the shell, but the problem is that you can't really you can't cake it on, you know. If you're if you're gonna apply stuff on here, first of all, it's got to be the right products. Okay. Second, once in a while, you've got to clean the surface. You can't let it build up. And I don't think this was ever cleaned before. Just over time, got built up and. Which this is the result. It's still coming off. All right, let's. 
let that tail cap dry a little bit. Especially in the vamp area. Look at this. Wow. All right, let's continue. Now, some of the creases, well, I shouldn't say creases, where the stitches are. I go ahead and use um, Q-tips. You want to you want to really get into the nooks and crannies of it, you know. This works pretty good. But I mean, a couple of couple of swipes, and you need to get a new Q-tip. Especially with this bear. I mean, God, man, this is there's a lot of buildup on this thing. go through about maybe a dozen q-tips if you guys can see it but it, it's like a um, it's not it's not black it's um it's like a it's supposed to be shell number eight but over time is looks more like plum rather than like a cordovan color, you know? I don't think I'm going to be able to bring that bright red hue back unless I put some dye on it, which is not really recommended like an acrylic dye on, on shell cordovans. So it's going to remain that dark tone after it gets done. But in some of the pictures it looks like it's some it looks looks black, but it's really not black. It's like a plum color now. Well, not really plum, like a like a like a dark, like a black cherry. Almost like a black cherry is what we call it. I guess plum has a little bit of purple in it. <sighs> Alrighty then. I'm getting a lot of feedbacks on my videos, and I appreciate that a lot. Mostly positive. Well, there'll be haters, you know. Anything you do, just fine. Who cares? Can't control what they think. Rather focus on the positives than than the rest. One of the viewers came by um, my shop the other day from Pennsylvania which is maybe a couple of hours away from here he just came in to say hello and and he brought me a present he brought me a, a tripod a little like a little tripod mini tripod he noticed that my phone was falling down <laughs> uh, falling down sometimes he brought me a tripod it was really really cool I wrote his name down somewhere. I'll find it. Really cool people. All right, so we're gonna let this dry, okay? We'll put a coat of conditioners on it, conditioner on it, and um, just kind of uh, let it absorb that little bit in. And then we're gonna go ahead and, and stitch up the toe. We're gonna patch that hole. Can't leave it like that, you know? then start reassembling. All right, let's continue. All right, this is just a piece of nylon, right? I use this um, to reline bags and, and stuff like that. I just got a piece and just kind of folded it over, okay?
mini hammer time. Well, you know what I mean, not too loud. Kind of low keyed this morning. The real hammering is going to come a little later on. Alright, so apply a little thin piece of thin piece of glue here. This is what I'm using. Everybody asks me, what kind of glue do you use? It's Masters All Purpose Cement. Good people. Alright, now, remember that canvas type lining that was in the back? So I cut a little bit of that out, okay? On, on the vamp and also on the toe area. I didn't want to put the nylon piece that I'm going to put in on top of that to kind of build that area up where it's going to bother his foot. So I took a little bit of about a half inch, half inch out. And then um, what I'm going to replace it approximately about a little over half inch of material that way it, it kind of uh, bridges that gap so it's not clunky it's not sitting you know it's not sitting on top of each other might make a high spot where it's going to bother his foot we don't want that that's the whole idea is me putting the time and the customer putting the money into it we want it to be comfortable after it gets done definitely don't want it to be uncomfortable. I mean it happens sometimes right because you're taking things apart to this level it's going to feel different when when the customer starts wearing a shoe but that doesn't mean it should be uncomfortable. Different yes but not uncomfortable. Different because he's got to go through the break-in period again because this is a major you know deconstruction of a shoe and then reassembling it back you're gonna feel it's gonna feel different it should feel different but that's nothing that's nothing abnormal about repairs like this they they you have to you have to break in a shoe again once you once you start wearing it have my phone with me yesterday or else I would have done this yesterday along with the other one <sighs> but unfortunately I didn't have it so I couldn't record anything and Lord knows I can't record on this because people are complaining it's at 120 or something is there even a 120 you know what I mean Steve I can't see what you're doing clearly I gotta see it clearly. It's too blurry, man. I hear you. And people are saying, for God's sake, somebody send this guy a camera so he can do a good recording. I'm like, well, why don't you send me a camera if it's your suggestion? Please don't send me a camera. I don't need a camera. I can get my own camera. It's just that it's going to be more work for me trying to download it on the computer. I think that's how it's done. Or upload it. I don't know what the heck you call it. See, now you got all me flustered, flustered and thinking about it. That's it. I'm going to get a film crew. Just so I can do these videos for you. Really? No, I'm not. You're going to have to deal with the whatever number resolution or whatever they call that. It's all right. It'll be all right. It's not the end of the world. Come on now. Don't be like that. It's okay. All right. So we are positioning everything together so we can stitch it. Okay. To make sure that I've got everything in the right place 
before I stitch it. See, it's still loose. I mean, you can't have it loose while you're stitching it because you don't want it to move. And then it's not stitched into the right place. Well, maybe I can do that. All right, I'll give it a try. You don't want to put too much glue because then, then the needle won't advance. The thread won't advance on the needle because the glue will get stuck on the needle itself. All right, let's continue. <clears throat> All right, we got a piece of leather. We thinned the edges out, okay? So it doesn't feel like it's, um, so his toes don't hurt. So the edges, I mean. Now all I'm doing is just kind of gluing that piece down. You really can't really stitch it on there, right? Just gonna glue it and then keep your fingers crossed. Keep your toes crossed. Get it? I think it'll be alright. It's better than having a hole there. See? Now we get to reassemble. You know, somebody made a comment on, on one of my videos that he was highly disappointed that I was running ads on, on my videos. You know what? It's a good thing, okay? Even though it is a bit annoying, I agree. Because sometimes I watch videos too. And there are ads on there. You know what? It is what it is. Besides, if you're willing to send me a check every month that those advertisements sent to me, I'll be willing, you know, I'll be glad to take off that, those ads that you so complain about. But for the time being, that puts food on the table and my family, and I'm not going to take it out. If you don't like it, well, again, I can't control what you do, but... That's how it's going to be. <clears throat> so you see, it is getting there. Now I know it's not, it's not the right shape because it, nothing is connected together, but it will be. So next, we're going to put a piece of material right here called gemming. Okay, that piece of material. This is a this is an old piece of gemming that that was um, that got a little bit of water damage. I salvaged part of it, so I still use it. So basically, this is a piece of canvas with fiberboard inside. I'll take this apart to show you. See all that? Now, this gets glued right here, just like that. Then you got the uppers, 
then you got the welt all stitched together. This is this piece is glued to the foot bed. So that's what secures the welt stitch onto the shoe. Now it's kind of tricky at the stage because if this is glued on crooked or the wrong way, then everything will follow that crooked line. So we got to be careful into putting that on there properly. All right, let's continue. Maybe this is a better angle for you guys to see what I'm doing. All right. So it's always tricky around the toe to bend that to that shape. Some relief cuts is what we call that. I'm sure there are lots of ways of doing this, but I don't know of any other way. I'm sure somebody's going to say, buy a new shoe. Well, you know what? The customer wants his shoes done. I'm not going to say no. So supposedly, um, he sent this to Alan Edmonds and um, they refused. Or they, they said they didn't want to recraft or it couldn't be recraft or something like that. I guess they were wrong. I mean, I don't blame them, you know, because this is this is so much out of the a uh, norm of of just repair, you know, because I mean, it's like an assembly line they have, right? And for for them to do something like this, this is this is a lot of work, you know, so I guess there comes a time where where the manufacturers will say, okay, well, you know, don't do it and we'll get you another pair or give you a discount or something. I don't know. I don't know what their, what their policy is, but as you can see, it can be done with just a little bit of little bit of willpower I guess. Is that the right word? Willpower? Oh, I put the, the toe, uh, toe counter in by the way. The other video it wasn't in there but it's in there now. I glued it in there. I can't show it to you now. It's in there. It's in there. Alright so now we get to go ahead and stitch the welt and everything else together. So we're getting there. It's starting to look like a shoe again. Alright, we are going to hand stitch this back together with a needle we call jerk needle that is just a um, see that hook you gotta be careful man these hooks are, are dangerous this is wax thread and there goes my camera again This is becoming, um, you know, an occurrence every time I record. All right, so what? I, I, I have the tripod on, but I had to get it like a higher angle. And all right, let's find some place else for this thing. I, I do, I do have it on the tripod. I promise you, but, but I also had it taped on the shelf, and you know, the tape gave away. That's all. It wasn't my fault, it was this stupid tape. 
Alright, it won't fall down, don't worry. <laughs> hey, if we can't laugh, what, 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 what good is life, you know? I laugh at myself. So all we're going to do, we're going to get this jerk needle, push it through the hole, and, you know, hook a thread onto the needle, and pull it through the other side. Just like that. Okay? Now, make sure the threads, make sure the threads even. Okay? And just continue that all the way until you go all the way around. Now, some of um, some of the bespoke shoemakers, when they do this, well, it's not done this way. This is almost like a production Goodyear welted shoe, right? Um, some bespoke shoemakers look look down on this type of construction, which is fine. It's up. It's their you know their prerogative you know so but anyway what, what I was what I was trying to get at was that they'll take um, when they're doing this when they're stitching the welt on right and at this point right here they'll pull they'll pull it really really tight I mean really really tight and that's how it should be because you don't want you don't you don't want it to loosen up over time you want it to last you for many years to come right but in this particular case I don't do that because what happens is that if I pull it too tight then it's going to kind of change the shape of the shoe okay and you don't want it to do that you don't want to get too you don't want to be too tight or the uppers to kind of crunch together to make it real snug you know now I do tighten a little bit but not really crazy crazy over tighten it um, when you're making a new shoe is different when you're then when you're repairing a shoe okay um, this is this is not making a shoe so it's going to be a little bit different than than what those guys are doing as far as the technique of the of this you know the pulling the welt stitches together Basically, that's about it. This will go all the way around. I could do this for you guys, and but I'll be—I would have run out of things to say. Well, not really. I can talk all day. You don't want to hear me talk all day, do you? Nah, I didn't think so. All right, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit. All right. And yes, there is, well, no, there will not be any music on the speed because people don't like music, I guess, during the speed up version of the video. Now we got the welt stitched on. Okay. Now we got to fill in this void right here with cork. Now this is a cork sheet. Now some, uh, you know, manu I shouldn't say some. Manufacturers will use um, like liquid cork, not like liquid liquid, like water liquid, but hot cork. And um, they. They squirt it into that little cavity there, and um, they'll even it out, like a little with a little putty knife. We don't have those machines. Those machines are mainly from for manufacturers, not for repair shops, right? So this is the next best thing. The idea is to fill in that, that that void there that the welt and the gemming leave. Okay, so 
whatever fills that spot right there, whether it's hot cork or cork from a sheet right here, it still fills it in and it's cork. Now this one, this particular model, this is the Fairgate model, right? It has a double thickness welt. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they call it, but when you look at it, it looks like it's two layers. You see that? When it gets all said and done, it's um, it looks like it has a midsole to it, but it doesn't. That's just a welt. It's a double thick welt. And with that type of a welt, it seems like the cavity here, this area here, is a lot deeper than regular regular Allen Edmonds. So we're going to use a little bit of a thicker cork. Now once the cork gets done, once the cork goes in, this piece will go on top. Now, years and years ago I thought this was a shank, right? I didn't know any better. It turns out that this is basically a piece that goes, let's say the cork is down, this goes on top like that, okay? The leather sole will come on top of that. And then you've got your heel base, your heel block. Now, when the heel block gets nailed in, it catches those fiberboard pieces. See those holes there? So basically that's just to secure the heel block when it gets nailed in to the shoe. Because you can't put long nails into most Aladendon's heel because the footbed does not have a cover. You don't want the nail coming all the way through. So they do that. So they use shorter nails and um, it basically catches that that fiberboard and it secures itself pretty good. Alright, I'm going to sand that flush, glue that fiberboard in and then glue the sole and keep going. Alright, let's continue. <laughs> Alright ladies and gentlemen, it's time. You guys know what time it is. Chris, you want to get your breakfast? getting there all right let's continue all right once we cut the edges we rough trimmed it okay and then we opened up the channel there so we can stitch it on there all right let's continue trying to move the thread out of the way and it skipped the channel. You see that? I was just checking on the top. It looks okay on the top so I'm going to leave that alone. Luckily it wasn't where it can be visible or else I had to do it over. The heel block will cover that detail. Cool. Looks good everywhere else. Alright, let's continue. Alright, one more hammer in time.
Cool. All right, let's continue. So the edges are done now. I'm going to start doing the tops and the bottoms. <clears throat> now this is a Venetian cream, okay? You can apply it on however you like, um, cloth or... I like to rub it in to the leather. my fingers. Now I, you know, some people, I mean it's not the manufacturer's fault that that toe cap came loose, right? Over time of of that movement it, it's going to come loose. Over time of wear, not really abuse to the shoe, just under normal wear. It happens sometimes. Now some people say the 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 cap here should be forward or backward so it's not in the flex area and um, but I don't, I don't know what the per, you know proper proper length is from like here to the toe there's um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of little details when making shoes when making patterns they they take that under consideration you know some people um, some people do it differently I guess but um, I don't know what the exact centimeters is. I think it's 10 centimeters, as somebody somebody said one time. Because I um, I made a shoe one time, and the toe piece was, or the toe cap was a little too forward. They said it wasn't it wasn't the proper measurement. Yeah, I made a shoe. That's a long story. Well, I got time to tell you. I was on a shoe forum one time, and um, this is the shoe, by the way. Now you see how that toe toe cap is shorter than that one. You guys see the difference? So apparently, this one is not correct. It's supposed to be, I think, ten centimeters. Ten centimeters. Well, they, I think, they gauge it from the the tip here to where that where it ends. This is only six and a half, so it should have been, well, ten's too far. Maybe it's eight. I'm not sure. I don't know what the correct number is. But anyway, I was on a shoe forum one time. There was a shoe uh, shoemaker saying that shoe repair guys didn't know how to make shoes. Now, I haven't been taught shoemaking at all. My dad was a shoemaker, but he never taught me the exact, you know, ways of making shoes. I said, okay, shoe, make, shoe repair guys don't know how to make shoes, huh? So I stopped what I was doing. Literally, I made the shoe from scratch. It's just one shoe. It's not even a pair. It's one shoe. Just to prove my point that some shoe repair guys know how to make shoes. So that's why that's why I have one shoe now. <laughs> I didn't make the other one. <laughs> anyway, one of these days I'll make a pair so I can wear. <laughs> All right, that's the history behind that that toe uh, the toe piece. All right, let's continue. Today. Today is uh, Tuesday. Right? Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. All right, so at this stage, um, basically, um, I'm going to put some color on the bottom. I lightly sanded the bottom to clean that up. Now, most people say you shouldn't do that, but the sandpaper I use is almost it starts off at 80 grit it's like 600 grit now it just takes a little bit fine you know fine surface off which is which is okay you're right you're not supposed to sand too much of that surface um, of the leather sole now you can do anything you want at this stage you can put neutral cream on it you can leave it you can leave it you know naked is what we call it you can put polishes. I always like to do something different.
Oh, that was Phoebe's die I was using, by the way. I gotta be careful not to get it on the uppers. And you don't have to go through all the cleaning steps again if you do that. Cool. All right, once we're there, turn it this way. A little bit crooked. We're basically going to take a shoe cream. You can do whatever you want. Nice effect, see? Once it gets done, it'll look like that. Cool. Alright, let's continue. Okay, at this stage we've we've got it buffed and now we're going to hey, go ahead. Coffee's ready. Alright, alright Chris, I'll be right there. So we're gonna do we're gonna put blue right here and then uh, we're gonna put blue on the stitch uh, stitch area also. Alright, so I'm gonna take a coffee break. Let's see what this boy's doing. Look at that. Right. This is Chris, everybody. Hello. This is a uh, this is a uh, friend of mine that I grew up with. <laughs> so we're gonna have coffee and what? Muffins? Blueberry muffins, handmade. Oh my God. Handmade by Panera Bread. Panera Bread. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's continue. All right, so. so. Again, is this mandatory? No. But I like doing it. I stitched it with blue thread, right? But this is just going to kind of enhance blue a little bit. Kind of breaks that pattern up a little bit of, of the brown tone. Now acrylic dyes are 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 good. Can't really use them everywhere. Angelus dyes are good. Not too bad. And when acrylic dyes are still wet, you can wipe them down with a little bit of water. Okay? But when it dries, it's kind of stuck. Then you can use turpentine. Mark where the heel is going to be. It's getting there. Alright, let's continue. Once we've got the base glued on, we'll go ahead and nail it. And these are threaded nails, ring shank nails, whatever you want to call them. 
the important thing is they can't be too long or else they'll go through the footbed from the other side and poke through which is not good we don't want that Damn, I missed the nail <coughs> So Chris is a friend of mine that I grew up with, and uh, he comes over in the morning sometimes, we have breakfast or coffee, then he goes off to work, well, I throw him out because if I didn't throw him out, he'll be here all day, I got work to do man, I got things to do, people to see, nah he's a good guy, man I've known him since I was 15 maybe, 14, 15, which was like a hundred years ago. Yeah, I'm like a hundred and, you know, 115 years old. You guys didn't know that? So we'll let that dry for a few minutes. <clears throat> so we're almost done with the project. This was unexpected. I wasn't gonna videotape this, this one. A couple of people asked me for it and I'm like, all right, whatever. I got time. So this was the old footbed, I uh, mean the, the heel block, right? We put a new one on there. This particular heel block is exactly like the original. Um, I get them from the same uh, manufacturer who sells it to Allen Edmonds. So it's identical to identical to what, it, what the original is. You speed this up a little bit because you know, I ain't got no time. I got things to do, people to see. That was a heat gun, by the way. All right. Is here. <clears throat> I always do this when I put heels on because the edges right here sometimes you'll have air pockets that squeezes it tight. All right, let's continue. Just going to do the final touches now. Add some brass accents, brass nails. So I make two holes, two dots, pattern, and one in the center. Pre-punch the holes. Because the nails are very small, it's hard to hold it, so having these holes do help. Now you can do any pattern you want on here, right? You can do one, you can do 20, you can do five, whatever you want. It's just a matter of what, what you want and what you feel like. They're small, they're, I believe, uh, these are 10 millimeter nails. Now they make smaller ones, they make 6 millimeters. These are mainly for decoration. Well, they help with a little bit of wear, but nothing really structural because they're not long enough. They're just kind of sitting there on the surface. Now, once the nails are done, we're going to do 
we're going to do the uppers with the Saphir Cordovan cream. Okay. Adds a little bit of color, not much, just a little bit. And then we're going to go on top of that, we're going to condition it again. Buff it like crazy. Maybe, maybe add a little bit of wax at the toe. Not much, just a little bit. Just to give it a little shine. Some people say don't use wax on shell. I mean, they're right. You shouldn't really put cake anything on shells. They're, they're beautiful naturally, you know? But adding a little bit of wax at the toe enhances the shine. So and one more time. She is done with the nails. Looky looky here. Alright, let's see. Cordovan color. Okay. Now you don't need to cake it on there. Just a little will be fine. Some people use daubers. Some people use cloth. I like I like using sponges. Let that sit for a little bit and we'll come back and buff it, condition it, and she is done. All right, let's continue. All right, so don't forget if you guys have any questions, if you go here about all my information is there company name, address, phone number, email just reach out and I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. If you're sending shoes in, shipping form is right here. Click onto that, fill this out, print it, and send it with your items. All right, let's continue. All right, well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. I think they turned out pretty good compared to what they were. I mean, what a day and night difference, you know? And he's going to get many years of use out of this. Once in a while, all he has to do is just moisturize them and condition them and buff them like crazy to get that nice shine on them. And um, that's all. And wear it and enjoy it. Alright. Well, any comments you make, positive or negative, doesn't matter. I'll take it all. Any shares you'd like to do, we'd appreciate it. And uh, once again, thank you for joining me. If you have any questions about a particular job, please email me at bedos at yahoo.com. That's B-E-D-O-S at yahoo.com. Alright, we'll see you again next time. Take care.